If you want to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page to gain access to exclusive videos, take part in Q&As, and watch my retrospectives before they go live on YouTube. Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here, back with a new Laserdisc Pickups video. Now, I've picked up a few discs since the last video was recorded in October of last year. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Miles contacted me. He was uh, based in Canada and his uncle was getting rid of loads of discs and they sent me this really nicely presented PDF file and um, I couldn't take all the discs, so I don't have the space and couldn't really afford to ship all of them to the UK. Um, but he did allow me to choose some, some titles from his uncle's collection. Um, they finally arrived like a couple of weeks ago. It took forever to come because we I think I purchased them in December, but obviously it was by sort of surface mail, by ship essentially. Um, they finally sort of arrived and perfectly packaged. The most, you know, I couldn't believe how well packaged they were. Um, but let's crack on with the first disc I got from uh, Miles and, um, and some other discs I got outside of that collection from eBay and I think one from Japan perhaps, I think, I can't remember. <laughs> But the first disc is Hackers, um, very cheesy movie from the 90s. Uh, Mark Commode is apparently a big fan of this movie. I think he did provide a sort of commentary uh, to it with the director. Um, comes with a theatrical trailer, presented in Dolby Surround. Very good transfer, I was very surprised by it. Um, I mean, it's MGM, MGM laser discs always look pretty good. There's no THX sort of you know, sort of telecine work on this. Um, so yeah, I mean, even for it, sort of, it's, it's presented in cinema scope. Um, so you've got a zoom in on the picture and it still looks pretty good. So yeah, it's worth hunting down if you're a big fan of the movie. I've, I've not seen it since it came out to VHS. And I always thought it was a bit, like it's so 90s, but there was one scene in the movie which always made me laugh. Like the villain in the film, like goes past on a skateboard and he passes the guy like a disc and I just thought it was hilarious. Um, there's like classic lines like hack the planet and so forth. But I think there's a great moment in the movie where they go inside the computer, you've got the sort of POV of this kind of, as a camera goes through the computer, sort of computer boards and you know, etc. And it's all done with miniatures. Um, so it does look pretty impressive. But yeah, I look forward to watching this again, just to sort of chuckle at some of the sort of the very 90s style style of uh, their attempts at hacking you know it's never it's never realistic in the movies is it when they hack computers next one is Mary Poppins the archive collection um, really nice gatefold cover as you can see I think a lot of these extras have been ported over to like the various DVDs and I think mostly blu-ray over the years um, it's presented uh, I think CLV I think one side is maybe both are Extras behind the scenes, look at Mary Poppins, storyboards, pictures, original trailer, and the premiere of the movie. Um, cheesy film, you know, I, I grew up with this film. Um, you know, I didn't, I've never been a huge fan of their live action films. I mean, I do enjoy them, but it wasn't something I always kind of seeked out. But I thought this was, you know, reasonable price. And uh, I do like, Disney Lays Discs are always really well presented as well. Um, they always got, you know, they were obviously expensive back in the day, but you know Disney put the effort in to their home video stuff. Not like today, unfortunately, where they've kind of stopped putting out their, you know, their back catalogue of movies on um, 4K. I think they are returning to it apparently, but at the moment there isn't much coming out. Next up is Terminator 2. The I believe this is the first release of the film on the format, uh, so it's, there's no THX sort of at the time, and this is the theatrical cut. Um, doesn't come with a trailer either. Nice gatefold cover. Very common version. Uh, picture transfer is not spectacular. Uh, I think the, the remaster in 93 perhaps, or maybe 94, the, the extended cut which had the box set and so forth. Um, the picture on that is a lot better. This one has, is a bit noisy. If you watch like, some of the explosions and so forth, they, the reds go a bit pink. Um, maybe something to do with the settings on my player, but I'm running, I've got a pretty good LD player um, and you know I've, T2 has, has looked better on the format so if you see it's going cheap obviously grab it if you, you know, want to add it to your collection a very common you know Terminator 2 is probably had the most releases on the format uh, of Laserdisc and this one's kind of you know it's not worth much so um, stick to the 
THX versions, if you see them knocking around, if you haven't got it in your collection already, because everyone has T2, to be honest. Next up is the THX version of Total Recall. Um, the standard, standard, you know, widescreen version, no trailer, unfortunately. Um, picture transfer is pretty good. Uh, it's not like, wow. I mean, at the time in magazines like Widescreen Review, they uh, gave it, I think it's about four out of five. And I think the DVD was out that, at that point and that got like 4.5, but because it was in anamorphic uh, widescreen. Um, but because obviously Total Recall has a lot of scenes set on Mars when the reds are really strong, with laser disc, that's often a bit of a problem when you've got really excessive reds, you can see a lot of noise in the chroma. Um, but this, I mean, it does manage to sort of hold the noise back. So yeah, I was quite impressed with that. And the surround sound is pretty good, the Dolby surround track. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna be, you know, if it's a recent Blu-ray is better with a sort of 5.1, but I remember reading that a lot of people weren't too impressed with the sort of the remaster of the film's sort of surround sound track. And most people prefer the original sort of PCM Dolby surround because the music's a little bit more, a little more spacious, a little bit of text, you know, it fills up the channels a bit better um, instead of being quite front heavy. Next up is Battle of Britain, a film I've never seen before. I've heard about it many times. It's a lot of the people that worked on the Bond films, um, and I think even the Superman films, like in terms of the special effects department. Um, very sort of you know, big budget movie, um, nice gatefold. Comes with multi-audio tracks. So basically that is a film soundtrack, obviously the film, regular dialogue and so forth, but a separate track just for the film score and sound effects, which is, you don't see that often. Um, and the transfer on this was really nice. Um, there's some scenes where they're sort of, you know, talking, they've got German characters and the subtitles, but the subtitles are obviously in the black border. So when you zoom in on the picture to fill out your TV, you can't see those subtitles. Um, but yeah, nice. I think it's another MGM title. Um, yeah, it is. So the transfer is very nice. So if you see it's going, you know, for a reasonable price, I would recommend getting it. Next up is The English Patient, uh, a film I had never seen before until recently. Um, obviously won nine Academy Awards. Um, I obviously had heard about it and um, I did love the spoof of the film by Adam and Joe, where they had all like these little teddy bears replacing these characters. Very funny. I'll try and find a clip on YouTube. Let me tell you about Wins. That is a whirlwind from southern Morocco. The Isaiahs, against which the Falahin defend themselves with knives. Mmm, yo, fascinating, yo. And the Hamarkan, a red wind so thick they call it the Sea of Darkness. Uh, excuse me, I, I just have to let some air in. But I, you know, the film, you know, does look spectacular. Um, on Lay's disc, it's not too bad. There's three versions of this movie. There's this one, which has Dolby Digital surround sound. There's a DTS version, and there's a Criterion collection, which apparently has a slightly better picture than this one. Widescreen Review magazine gave it like five out of five, and this one got like 4.5. So it's not a major difference, but um, I I enjoyed the film. It was it is pretty long, um, but I didn't think the, the romance between Ray Fiennes and um, I think it's Julie no it's not her Christine Scott Thomas um, I didn't think was particularly interesting, <laughs> put it that way, because um, he's a he's a bit of an ass. Or is it Ray Fiennes and the um, the French actress? I can't remember her name now. It's on there somewhere. Uh, Juliette, is it Binoche? Um, her sort of side of the story, her love story, is far more engaging, I thought. But yeah, worth watching. But it's not a film you'd watch repeatedly. It's one of those films you kind of watch every few years, perhaps. Right. Those are discs from uh, Canada. Uh, these ones are the ones I picked up the last few months on eBay. Um, we have Somewhere in Time, the Japanese release from 1990. Um, picture transfer is pretty good. Pan and scan, unfortunately. All of the versions of Somewhere in Time have all been pan and scan on the format. Um, there's a Hong Kong release and there's a US version. The US version is very old, sort of analog, 1985, I think, transfer. And it's, I remember being pretty impressed by that at the time, the, the transfer. This one comes with um, uh, production notes. Um, Sometimes you have stuff on the back, but it's just a single sheet. Um, I presume it's just, yeah, I presume it's production notes. Um, so I can't read it, it's in Japanese. <laughs> uh, the audio, unfortunately, is only in like analog. There's no digital track on here. So it, was, it did take a little bit of adjusting on the settings to get the audio right. But um, yeah, 
not a bad uh, transfer and uh, obviously the Blu-ray's out, very common to get hold of it now and obviously a far better picture but um, I've seen this on three different, you know, seen this released three times on the format and uh, I think this version probably looks the nicest because it's basically came out, you know, in the early 90s. Next up is the day of the Triffids. Now, my, my girlfriend was reading the book, original book of this at the time, and I thought, well, there must be a movie, because they did trans, you know, did adapt a lot of these kind of books in the 50s to these kind of sort of B-movie sci-fi films, and of course there was. Um, we watched a sort of DVD rib, and um, it, oh, it's terrible transfer, awful. And I thought, well, maybe the Lays disc will be better. Sadly not. <laughs> I think it was like a slightly better picture. Um, there are some fantastic matte paintings in this film, which are just kind of just lost in the sort of poor uh, job of the of the, re of the transfer to, to the format. Um, I think the first half is pretty good, and it sort of falls into the usual 50s B-movie thing where they've, they've changed the story so much, it sort of just falls apart. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. But yeah, if you're hoping for a sort of improvement over the ones you can stream on Amazon or find a DVD, it's still, it's still the same master. So hopefully one day they will do a proper sort of remaster of this movie and so we can see those kind of glorious kind of, it's all sort of done in cinema scope, like two, three, five to one. So it should look gorgeous, but sadly it doesn't uh, at the moment. Next up is the special edition of Lawnmower Man. Uh, gatefold release, um, Dolby Surround, THX, bunch of extras such as commentary, production notes, steals, an interview with the director, and I think that's kind of like, yeah, storyboards and conceptual art. Um, I've been looking for this for so long. I mean, obviously there's a Shout Factory Blu-ray, which I've got, very nicely done. That is, I feel it's also the best version to own of Law Mo Man. It's a movie I've always been wanting to review, but there's no film soundtrack out there. So I like to, you know, use the music and talk about it and so forth, but there's no film score. Oddly, there's, there's a soundtrack release for the sequel, which is a terrible film, but great score. But Sadly, no music for this one. Um, transfer's pretty nice. Um, reviews at the time were kind of like, you know, 3.5 out of 5 for its picture and sound. It's, yeah, it's, it's always a title that's kind of eluded me for so long, but till recently I, I got it for a reasonable price. Um, yeah, it's been released, you know, you can get the director's, this is the director's cut on this disc and in widescreen. There is another director's cut release, which is in pan and scan, but that's a bit, that, I did have that. I think I still got it in my collection, but one side has got laser rot, so I'm just gonna bin that. And there was, of course, another version, just the theatrical cut. But yeah, this is the one that most people probably go after if they're a fan of the movie. And finally, we have the Criterion Collection of The Rock. Um, I purchased this off eBay. Um, the seller accidentally, I believe, posted it to the wrong person. And he was so apologetic. And he went out and got a copy from America, sealed and send it to me, like, and just like, you know, I could have got a refund, but I said, no, 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 if you can get another copy, that'd be great. So he did it, so it was wonderful. So it came sealed. Um, fantastic transfer. It's a late release, of course, from Criterion. I think the last, I think the one after this, the last Criterion release was, on the format, was Armageddon. It comes with a uh, booklet and um, the usual kind of standard of extras. You've got audio commentary, um, sort of movie magic episode they put on there. It's even got a write-up by Roger Ebert in here, um, which is surprising, but I'm sure he would have been less than impressed with Michael Bay's later work, such as the Transformers movies and endless sequels. Um, but yeah, that was, you know, it was very nice to get this. And, um, you know, obviously it was ported at the time to DVD, so both share the same extras. I'm sure the DVD probably looks slightly better with its picture because it was anamorphic, 16 by nine. But yeah, for, you know, for a late release, it still looks gorgeous. And um, if, you can get, if you can find it for a good price, then definitely get hold of it. It's probably, yeah, one of Michael Bay's better movies, this and Bad Boys, I really liked. Armageddon does have its fans, um, but that film is way too long and just so stupid. But hey, you know, it can, be, it can be enjoyed for all the wrong reasons as well. Well, everyone, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back with some more Laserdisc pickup videos in future. My collection is pretty full now, but you know, everyone always says, you know, I'm done collecting, I don't need any more, and suddenly a week later you see a bunch of discs and go, oh, I want those. But um, at the moment I'm pretty content with what I've got. Um, but vid other videos wise on the channel, we have a uh, retrospective on Die Hard 2 coming up soon, and some other commentaries as well. 
Okay, everyone, take care of yourselves and goodbye.